So, you know, down in D.C., they call it sausage making. But I worked for the famous Hoover Brothers of Harlem where I learned how to make great sausage. And, well, they're making something else. And to be nice, I'll, I'll just call it a mess down there. And it could get even messier unless two people really stand firm. I'm going to bring in the Bonson Group managing partner, David Bonson. And, David, uh, first I want to start with this CBO scoring of the infrastructure bill. It turns out, according to the math, it's going to add $260 billion in deficits. I, again, I don't think anybody's surprised, but should we be worried now about what, what kind of harebrained ideas they'll come up with to supposedly pay for it? Yeah, I think that if we're just focusing on what it does to the deficit, it's kind of hard to get concerned because those numbers are already so outlandish and we've all gotten sort of desensitized to the violence of the numbers taking place with government debt. The bigger concern is essentially the idea that we live in a country where people can just make stuff up, as you said, a kind of harebrained <laughs> idea and, and expected to get scored in a way that's going to make the, the numbers all come together. We know that households can't do that with their own budget. We know companies can't do that. The government perpetually gets away with doing it. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it would be a joke, except the joke is on us. Uh, you know, there's talk again, uh, speaking of paying for things, of getting rid of the carried interest uh, so that private equity could, quote unquote, pay their fair share. Now, uh, this, according to Senators Wyden and White House, it would raise uh, their plan. They have a plan now. It would raise $63 billion. And I might add, White House said it would hurt some of the folks in this yacht club. So what about it this time? They're going to go after the, 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 the private equity group guys? <laughs> We'll see, because look, it was both President Obama and President Trump that said they were going to get rid of this carried interest deal, and neither one was able to. So there's something about this that when push comes to shove, has made it pretty sticky. Um, I appreciate the little jab he gets in about the Yacht Club, and I know everyone loves <laughs> class warfare these days. But, you know, honestly, it's a tricky subject. It's complicated. I don't like demonizing the private equity industry. And I want to be real clear, by the way, I think you know this. My fees come to me from clients as ordinary income. So I'm not talking my own book here. But there is a sense in which part of these transactions do have a capital gain component. So it's a sticky area. The bigger concern mm -hmm. I have is with demonizing a sector that has actually been very, very productive for jobs in our country. I will share something with you in the audience. Uh, President Trump told me he tried, and almost immediately his phone rang off the hook, and there were lawmakers who had never heard from their number one donors for decades, and they said, don't touch it. Uh, so for, whatever, for what it's worth, that's what I was told, why it couldn't get done under President Trump. Uh, meanwhile, Senator Manchin, he's written a letter to Jay Powell, but uh, you know, I really believe he, he wrote it to Nancy Pelosi. He's just using Powell you know, as a springboard, if you will. Take a listen to this part, David. Tell me what you think. Simply put, our monetary and fiscal stimulus response met the moment of crisis when our ac economy suffered the medical equivalent of a heart attack. But now it's time to ensure we don't overprescribe the patient by further stimulating an already strong recovery and therefore risk our ability to respond to future crises we are sure to face. I, it sounds like I'm not going to vote for $3.5 trillion of spending. I think you're exactly right. This is a veiled message to Nancy Pelosi and maybe even to President Biden on the fiscal stimulus side. He's using the monetary side and Jay Powell is kind of the the vehicle to deliver. However, he's exactly right that emergency measures ought not to stay in non-emergency moments. You could very well have written the same letter a couple years after the financial crisis, that we were still keeping on a lot of emergency monetary measures after the immediacy of the great financial crisis had been behind us. This is all about Milton Friedman's eternal dictum that there is nothing so permanent as a temporary government program. And, and and I don't think it's, I'm worried about monetary stimulus overheating the economy. Everyone's talking that way about the inflation concerns and such. What I'm mm -hmm. concerned about is the distortions that these Federal Reserve uh, elements continue and it ultimately through time distorts risk. It's very bad for the economy and I appreciate what the approach Manchin's taking here. Yeah, so do I. Hey, David, I also appreciate you. Always a fantastic conversation. Thank you, my friend. Have a fantastic weekend. Thanks so much, Charles. Appreciate it.